This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. This podcast is sponsored by listeners just like you. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll On a certain religious moshav in Israel, there was a woman who had given birth a couple of times before, and each time she gave birth, she suffered greatly and had many health problems. As her situation worsened, the doctors told her if she ever tried to give birth again, it might be the last time. And now she was pregnant again. She didn't know what to do. She went to all kinds of rabbis and mekubalim, Hasidic rebbe's, and anyone she could find for a blessing. She also went to Davin by the graves of many tzaddikim buried in the Holy Land. But still she was very worried, and after a doctor examined her and told her that the problems were still there and she was still in danger, she didn't really know what to do. A friend of hers suggested that she contact the Lubavitcher Rebbe in Brooklyn, New York. She thought it was a bit strange, being Israeli. What would the Rebbe know about her in Israel? But she figured she had nothing to lose, and so shortly before she was supposed to give birth, she sent a letter to the Rebbe and quickly received a remarkable response. The Rebbe wrote her back that there's a Moshav not far from where she lives, and next to the Moshav is a spring. On the other side of the spring was a factory. The workers in the factory leave every afternoon at 4.30. Her husband should walk over there before that hour and stand near the gate. And when the workers come out from finishing their work, he should count them one by one, and when he finds the tenth one, he should follow him. That was the Rebbe's advice. So this couple, they didn't know what to do. First of all, how could the Rebbe ever know these things? And the Rebbe's in New York, what would he know anything about happening in Israel? But the husband said, what do we have to lose? And I want you to be healthy. I'm going to go. So the next day, the husband followed the directions. He found the spring. He found the factory. And he stood outside the gate of the factory and waited, watching his watch until it was 4.30. And just like that at 4.30, the workers began to file out one by one. The husband counted them. One, two, three. When he saw the tenth man, he looked just like an ordinary person. There was nothing special looking about him at all. He seemed hardly distinguishable from any of the other workers before him or after him. The husband shrugged his shoulders and he said to himself, well, the Rebbe told me to follow him, so I'm going to follow him. And the man walked and walked until he finally arrived at a nearby settlement. And then he came to a certain house, walked up the stairs to the house, closed the door behind him, just like anyone else would do after they finished a day of work. The husband stood there, gazing from a distance, not really sure what to do, but realizing that he didn't have any other choice, he walked over and knocked on the door. A woman answered the door and asked how she could help him, and he said he wished to speak with the man who had just entered the house before him, the man who worked at the factory near the spring. The woman simply nodded and told him to wait there, and then she disappeared inside. A few minutes later, she came back with the man that worked in the factory. The man asked the visitor who he was and why he wished to speak with him, and the husband A little embarrassed, he said, I'm really sorry, I know this sounds strange. And to tell you the truth, I don't know why, but my wife is in a life-threatening situation. And we wrote to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and he said to count the workers and to follow you. And as the husband is talking, the man says, I can't believe it! I can't believe it! And you could see that there was waves of surprise and emotion going over his face. Even here, the Holy Rebbe has found me. And then he said to the husband, Okay, tell me the whole story about your wife's difficulties giving birth. And so the husband told the story of the wife having difficulty each time she gave birth, and the letter to the Rebbe, and the strange answer. And the husband said, So I went to the factory, and I counted, and you were the tenth man. And I followed you here, just like the Rebbe said. But that's all I know. So the factory worker, he just smiled. And he said, Wait here for a few moments. Then he went back inside the house, and shortly returned afterwards, with a few cubes of sugar in his hand. He said, Take these. These are for your wife. The husband took them, surprised. And then he said, But it's not for this birth. That's because she already gave birth. Earth. Just a few seconds ago, she and the baby are both healthy, Baruch Hashem. There were no problems at all. The husband was standing there speechless. He didn't know what to say. And then the factory worker continued, These sugar cubes are for future births. If your wife has any problems, give her from these sugar cubes to eat, and everything will be fine right away. The husband couldn't stop thanking the factory worker. Again and again, the two men hugged and then parted ways. And when the husband came back to the Moshav, he realized that his wife indeed had given birth with no complications. 
times, exactly as the mystery man had said. All of the residents of the Moshav were shocked and amazed of the good news of the unexpected smooth birth. And then when they heard the story of this factory worker and the letter from the Rebbe, everyone decided that they had to go and find the hidden tzaddik and get a bracha from him. By the time they got to his house, the house was vacant. And when they went and checked in the factory, the factory owner said he had already quit his job and left town. This is a story that was told by a non Lubavitcher chassid who was there on the Moshav at the time and heard it firsthand from the couple. Many years later, and this is a story given over by Yerachmiel Tillis, he said they were hosting somebody at a sentence vat, a student from the non-Hasidic Torah of Adas Yeshiva in Brooklyn. And after he heard this story, he said, I have to tell a story about the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And he told the story of his brother-in-law who heard it from his study partner at another non-Hasidic Yeshiva. And it turned out to be almost exactly the same story. Difficulty in giving birth, surprise that the holy men had been discovered in sugar cubes. However, this time it was in a remote location in the northwest coast of the United States. And it entailed getting on a plane and a bus and a taxi to get there. And also in this version, the husband delivered the sugar cubes to his wife just in time for the birth to ease the difficulties. And the husband himself went back to thank the, the hidden tzaddik. And when he got there, the hidden tzaddik wasn't there anymore. But this time, the husband went to the Rebbe. And he said, Rebbe, here's the story. I found the hidden tzaddik and everything worked out. And the Rebbe just smiled. Did he know, 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 know.